Okay, this tutorial is going to be on rigging and animating a 3D spider in 3D Studio using bones, the bones that come with 3D Studio. I happen to be using release 9 of 3D Studio right now and I uh, just want to mention my website also 3dcognition.com uh, here's the home page if you go to tutorials you'll see a lot of other tutorials that may be of interest to you um, I'm always looking for suggestions for new tutorials so you can click the contact page if you have uh, ideas also feedback is welcome and theory page I want to mention that also if you click on animation off of the theory page you'll see a lot of the principles of animation um, that could help you improve your animations if you don't already know these and use these I highly recommend using the principles of animation whenever possible now to uh, kind of show you what we'll be doing um, here is the end result it's an um, animated spider character uh, eight legs um, it's using a lot of counter pose, secondary motion, um, and the legs are using a alternating tetrapod type action. So, you know, four-legged creatures, a tetrapod, a spider has eight legs, so it uses two on each side at a time, and they kind of work together as a team, even though often they're a little bit offset. Now, spiders do move in other ways as well but this is the most common movement that I'm aware of so that's what I've selected for the spider and I uh, guess that's about it for an overview so um, also I'll mention this too from frame 0 to 40 on this one is the idle uh, cycle so this is being made for a game um, and you'll notice that from about here until here that's our walk cycle or our run cycle now if you have a if you're doing uh, a spider animation where you want it to actually move forward instead of walk in place um, then you're gonna have to move the body and I'll talk about that when we get to it but uh, just so you know what the idea is here it's a very simple uh, character mesh uh, you can see there's not that many faces on it and uh, the idea is that in a game engine this is gonna be rendered and uh, it's gonna be rendered real time so you've got to keep your models very simple. And uh, since I'm talking about game engines, I'll just jump in and show you the game engine I'm going to be using. Not in this tutorial, but just so you have a view of you know what, we're, what I'm going to be doing with this later. Here's the uh, Unity game engine. It's this uh, game engine is actually called Unity 3D. And there's that same spider character walking around in the game engine. Now the way this is moving is it's walking in place in Max, but when I bring it into Unity, there's a script that makes this uh, character move forward and it appears as though it's actually walking. All it's really doing is walking in place while it's moving forward at the same time. It gives the illusion of forward movement. And then when I release the forward button, it just kind of breathes and hangs out there in the idle cycle. So I uh, also want to say one more thing about Unity because I'm a big fan of Unity. Um, if I go back to my website and we go to uh, games, I've got some games. This is uh, a lot of this is in progress, in process stuff. But uh, the Unity engine has a web player, so you can actually have video games on the web in a few minutes if you want to, um, and so that's what's going on here this is the same thing on the web and you don't even need that fast of a connection for something simple like this so having said that let me close that get out of here and um, talk about how to do this from scratch so let's just start a new file i will do a reset and we'll go to our front viewport maximize it and first thing I'll do is go to customize unit setup and check my units it's generic um, that's what I prefer to work in and then I'm gonna go to box I'm gonna make myself a box that's let's say about 200 units high why 200 units because the game engine I'm gonna be going into um, prefers characters about that high so it's just a 
gives me a rule of thumb. Don't make anything too much bigger than that. And now I'll go ahead and start creating the characters. So I'll start with bones. So I'm going to go to create systems and then bones. Or I could go to character bone tools and pick bones, create bone off of here. The reason I don't like to do it off of here is it takes up some of my real estate, uh, real estate on the screen. So this way I can fit it all into a video tutorial and just use the tools over on the right side here. So bones. And I'll just click release with the left mouse button. Click release and right button release. And what that does is end the bone uh, chain. So if I just keep clicking with my left button, there's the bone chain. Right click, it ends it. If you want to select it, you can grab one link at a time. If I double click this link, it selects all the subsequent links. Or if I double click the original link, I can just delete the whole thing. Let's go to bones again and make our first leg bone. I'll just come up high, come down here, and something like that. And let's just uh, take a look at top view. Now this is going to be the center of the character, so I'm going to move this over a little bit and just make some more leg bones. We'll turn off grid and I'll turn on smooth with edges so you can see that better. And uh, if I hold down my shift key, I can press and drag. If I grab this whole bone link, bone chain, and uh, by double clicking, shift, press and drag on the Y axis, I've just made a copy and another copy and another copy. So those are my four legs for one side of the spider. So let's double click this one and rotate it. And I'll turn on my angular snap which is set to five degrees right now. I'm going to do this at about let's say 55 degrees. Right about there and then this one. Let's rotate it something like 65 degrees. And then uh, these need to rotate also, but I'm double clicking them so the entire bone chain gets selected. And let's say 15 degrees each. These two tend to be pretty well matched up on a spider. So I'm keeping them pretty similar to each other. And now we're just going to move these into position so that they fit where the bod body of the spider is going to be. Now the way I'm designing this is I'm making the uh, bones and the skeleton of the spider first and then I'm going to build a body around it. And I'm not actually going to focus much on the modeling of the spider in this tutorial because that's not really the purpose of this tutorial. But I will talk about it a little bit especially when we get into skinning and how to fit the bones to the body. So let's say that that's good right there. The key thing is here to understand what the shape of the body is going to be, where the edge of the body will be, so that you want, that the, you want the ends of these bones, this little joint here, this little tip, you want it to just touch the edge of the body so that when these legs move, they don't dig in too far into the body and they're not hard to uh, uh, manipulate and make everything.